Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon and welcome to Championship Sunday here at the Halo World Championship Tour Cologne. I'm Brycey and I'll be on the analyst panel all day today, bringing the action with the panel of experts. And speaking of experts, so far joining me, we are going to have Ghost the Army, Strong Side and Gaskin. Guys, how are we today? Absolutely fantastic. As always, looking forward to uh, some some better action, I guess, here today. Yeah, the action we're going to see today, I mean, down to the finalists here. Two more teams are going home today. These are going to be some, some entertaining matches to see because we could possibly still see an upset, but we know Epsilon's just... They're still undefeated, though. Uh, I'm hoping now we'll see the close games. We saw a few sweeps yesterday. Yep. But hopefully now we'll get the good teams playing one another. Well, let, let's kind of dive straight in then. Let's go and talk about the big storyline. Let's talk about the big things coming up today and the biggest things we've seen so far over this weekend. Gaskin, what do you see? Uh, Dignitas getting knocked out early. That's obviously the big one. We yeah. all know that. Yeah, none of us saw that coming at all. Dignitas didn't seem to really be on their game, and it definitely, uh, Millennium, uh, they, they took control of that series, and they realized that. Yeah, I mean, that was uh, definitely a huge story, right? Uh, but at the same time, I also have to call it Fabi for just playing amazing all weekend. Um, they've really impressed. I know that we kind of assumed that they had this spark, yeah. but this sort of consistency, I, I think, is very impressive. Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, yesterday was really kind of entertaining. We had the group stages, and funny enough, the biggest story actually came out of the group stages. Yep. Uh, which we weren't expecting. We were maybe thinking quarterfinals, that's where the real drama will happen. But no, Big Dog's already knocked out. However, let's take a little look at how it's going to go down. Let's take a little look at the schedule now to see how it's all kind of panned out. Obviously, yesterday we had the group matches. Those were all done and dusted. And then we got the distinct pleasure of sending two teams to the World Championship. Quarterfinal one and two was done yesterday. We saw Fabi and Excel go through. Today, quarterfinal three and four. Two more tickets, two more opportunities. And then after that, we've got the semi-finals and the grand final to find out who is number one in the EMEA region. Uh, guys, let's uh, kind of go for this yesterday. Highlights. I want to know what your big things were yesterday. Ghost the Army, I know you have one that's... Uh, a little bit different yeah, from the others. I, I'm going to just go out there and say it. I mean, my favorite part of yesterday was definitely Truth Capture the Flag. Yeah. Um, we saw that ground pound. It was a half betrayal, double oh, kill, yeah, yeah. right? And then we saw Monkey come in from the carbine side with that mustache slide right underneath the nose of an opponent, capture the flag, seal that victory, sent them to game five where they went on to win and uh, <laughs> secure their spot. So pretty amazing. Yes, anyway, strong side, what did you kind of, kind of your favorite part yesterday? I'm going to say everything with Fabi. Uh, speed right. was going nuts with the sniper rifle yep. constantly throughout the day. And uh, that's, he's honestly kind of taking the reign of, of Chalky in a sense from back in the packs. Pax Prime Showdown. So he's my player to watch coming into today, and I'd love to see more from yeah. him. I think just that Fabi versus Pulse series was just one of the best. That last series yeah. yesterday, one of the best series I've watched in a long time in European Halo. So it's just fantastic to be here. Great to have European Halo this big and this good again. I think one of the main things about that series for me was just the fact that all the way through it, you didn't know who was going to win. Uh, there was a good chance, I think, around game number three, where I was like, Pulse have got this, surely. This has got to be Pulse, and then, you know, Fabi rallied, they came crazy. back. We had close games, we had turnarounds. It was all thrills and spells on day one. It really was. Um, obviously, the Dignitas thing, also, also a highlight. I mean, the emotion ran so high yesterday in the studio. Um, that I, I think even the analyst panel got a little bit hard. choked up. It was hard to watch. I yeah, mean, they're not even here today, really, to watch. I, they, yeah. might, they might come later, but uh, I did see their coach, and... And, uh, yeah, he's, he's just been... It's unfortunate, you know? They, they were a broken team. It, yeah, I it mean, really hurt. But at the end of the day, you know, you got to come out, check out this, you know, Championship Sunday, yeah. talk to some more players, learn, watch. You know, I know, I know that, uh, you know, it's a big, it's a big deal to kind of learn from those mistakes, I right? I think the big problem yesterday with Dignitas, they weren't playing to win. They were playing not to lose. They were... Re I was watching their gameplay. They were just staying on their half of the map. They weren't challenging. They were being too patient almost and it's not the dignitas we used to be seeing mm. fusion one of the most aggressive players that i've ever seen play halo just sitting back waiting waiting for his but like they just they needed to want to win the game yeah. watching septic play as well he seemed very nervous every individual battle he was getting into it seemed like he was flustered and normally the septic we see he's winning all of those individual battles and we didn't see that from him yesterday awesome well i think we've covered just about enough of yesterday's group games Let's kind of get into the bracket now. Let's take a look at how yep. this single elimination bracket is playing out. Of course, quarterfinal one, we did see Excel just take down Team Vitality 3-0 uh, 
earning them that World Championship spot and their place in the semi-final. Quarter-final two, Fab and Pulse. That was a game we were literally just talking about, nail-biting right to the finish. But Fab E managed to come above Pulse Gaming and secure their spot in the World Championship. That was yesterday. Today, we are going to see Epsilon go up against Supremacy. And a lot of people are kind of still thinking that's a good draw for Epsilon. Supremacy really got their work cut out. And then quarter final four, Infused Gaming versus Millennium. Millennium really being one of the teams to watch, knowing that they were a big cause of the downfall of Dignitas yesterday. Um, all right, guys, let's kind of jump into this now. I kind of want to go through your, your thoughts on this bracket um, and what we're expecting. I mean, Epsilon versus Supremacy, like you said, really good draw for Epsilon. Yep. They're going to be confident going into this. Supremacy probably were the best French team online. They yeah, had some great sure. performances. Then they went to the French land, and from first seed, they finished fourth. I mean, that's not that's great. They, they kind of got taken over by Pulse as the best French team. Mm -hmm. But there's some fantastic players on that squad. They could step up on the day. Epsilon just need to make sure they don't underestimate them. Yeah, without a doubt. And I think that it's a big deal um, to note that they were the best French team, right? And when it comes to a LAN event and they came out, right, they got fourth. But, hey, everyone has a bad tournament. There are times where, you know, you kind of dip down. I'm sure you've had plenty. Times. You know, we've had a few, but you, you got to bounce back, and, and you can win still. It, 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 uh, it's definitely possible. So, uh, you know, we could see a completely different supremacy team here today. All right, let's talk quickly about the other game, the Infused Millennium game. And for me, this is very interesting because of the thing I like to do called benchmarking. If Millennium can mm. take down Dignitas like they did 2-0 yesterday, does that mean Infused to sit there this morning going, these took down the seed who are technically above us? Is that going to cause any issues for them, do you think? I think going into the match, uh, Obviously, Infused wants to, to think that they're the better squad, but they cannot overlook Millennium because they did take down the ranked two yeah. seed, Dignitas. And some may say Dignitas wasn't playing their best, Millennium was just on fire. You know, it comes down to whoever's playing better on that day. If, if Infused is not playing on their A game and Millennium is just on fire like they were yesterday, yep. Yep. we could see another major <clears throat> upset here today. Yeah, I spoke to a few of the Infused players earlier, and... They did seem a little bit nervous about Millennium. They're, they know they can win if they play their For game. Sure. And I said that. I said, just play your game. Don't do what Dignitas did. Don't just, like, think about America. They need to just concentrate yeah. on the game, finish it, get it done. It's yeah. probably one of those ones where they're sitting there going, so this is for a ticket and 25,000. Exactly. That's a little, it's a little bit of pressure coming in, knowing they've beat them as well. But before we get too much into any of these games, let's also talk about the semi-final that we know is going to happen. Oh, yeah. It's going to be XL versus Fab E. How do we think these two teams are going to match up? I mean, it's going to be a great matchup. Uh, it, it's pretty, you know, it's a huge battle, right, amongst uh -huh. these two teams. And I want to see what Speed can do against one of these top teams, right? I mean, he's been doing it all weekend long. He's been hitting shots now. There has been a few times where without a sniper rifle, he hasn't really stepped up. Um, so I'm curious to see with these best of fives, kind of how that's going to play out and, and, and uh, into his favor. I think it's a fantastic opportunity for both of these teams. They've avoided Epsilon. Yep. They've avoided Infused, who are arguably the favorites in this tournament. Yep. They can now move on to the final and really make a name for themselves. I'm going to be looking at Fabi, definitely. Like, Speed has just been on absolute form, like you said, with the sniper. Mm -hmm. If he can turn up, there's no reason they can't make that final. And when we talk about Speed, just with the sniper rifle, yesterday, I'd like to, to kind of touch on when they lost those games to Pulse, they were losing them yeah. on matches or on maps <coughs> that did not have yes, sniper rifles. we, we rifle. had that conversation. We said so, it, it was almost like night and day. It, it, it was. If he could have that sniper rifle, such a bigger factor. Um, just very quickly, I do want to touch on the fact that, for me, XL seemed to have have an easier run. I don't know whether that's just because they were better than the teams they were playing against, but Fabi really had to go through the trenches. They were broken over the anvil several times um, and still came back. So it may be a point where they're, they're, they're kind of in competition mode a little bit more than Excel. I mean, to be fair, though, Fabi did get a, a broken Dignitas, right? So um, after, after Millennium, you know, kind of handled them, uh, they, they did have that opportunity to kind of you know, put, stick that last dagger in, if you okay. will, and, and seal the grave for him. So uh, I think both teams kind of had a little bit of ease there, but we'll <laughs> see. We'll see how it come, comes out. All right, so I kind of want predictions from you guys, and the predictions I'm actually going to ask for are who do you think is going to win this entire thing, and then who do you think is coming second? I want to know who you think is oh, going to be in the grand final. Wow. Let's start with Gaskin. Okay, I think Epsilon are going to win the whole tournament. I think grand final is going to be Epsilon versus Bob. It's hard oh, to pull okay. between Exxon and Fabi, but I think Fabi will turn up today. You know, I'm going to have to go with Epsilon as well. It's hard not to pick them with their track record. Yep. 
but I'm going to have to pick Excel. I'm, I'm, I'm voting for Riots, and I think hopefully we can see a good matchup between those two teams. I'd love to see Excel take a few matches from Epsilon and uh, really make them work for that win. <laughs> I, I'm going to go with the Excel for the win today, actually. And the reason why I'm going with that, hear me out, is because after watching them yesterday, I can't help but notice that they really have that synergy, right? That when we talk about a championship caliber team, you see them all just excited to be there, right? Excited to be there with each other. Yeah. They're walking around the building together. There's no one that's by themselves. They're very tight-knit group right now. And, I mean, you got to worry, you know, Riots, he's, he's such a, a, a well-renowned player, um, and he brings so much, uh, so many years, right, to this, to this team with experience. And I, I got to say, there's some young talent on there, too, so I'm, I'm excited to see if they can uh, show up Epsilon. I mean, obviously, what would be amazing, we didn't really touch on it, if Infused made the final and played XL, then you've got a little bit of rivalry, obviously, Infused oh, yeah. dropping, right? <laughs> so, I mean, I think everyone would like to see that, but I, I'm not sure Infused can make it. No, we'll see. I mean, Ghost Army's pretty much picked the underdogs all weekend, no, so come on. take everything he says with a little pinch of salt. <laughs> all right, well, I think it's about time that we start getting ready for the first game of the day. It will be Epsilon versus Supremacy, but first, let's have a little listen to what the players had to say. We lost against uh, Excel, and uh, that's it. So it's just uh, we're happy because we are in, in the quarterfinal, but we're disappointed. Um, I think it was just going to be an easy game for us because of, uh, we've played against our German team before and we're kind of used to playing against Europeans. We've just been at X Games, so playing against the best teams in the world, basically. So that was really good practice to come back into this and kind of have an easy run through to the finals, hopefully. We're going to try to be uh, more aggressive and they're really uh, like we, we have to don't let them play and just settle their game. We try and fix up our play style and our starting strats against different teams. I think that like everyone else wants to win it, but uh, I'm just happy to be here. Yeah, I think it's de definitely our first step on the road to win the championship. Um, if we keep on playing like we are now and improving, um, definitely see us winning. All right, well, it looks like Supremacy are happy to be here. Pressure really on Epsilon, though, for this one. Oh, yeah. I think they touched on it well, the Bucks. They kind of said, we've been to X Games, we've played the best of the best, we shouldn't struggle against a team like this. They're confident, and it's good to see a team that is confident at this event. Yeah, I, th I think they're going to kind of go into this match, though, as taking this as a warm-up. They're, they're not going to take them lightly, but they really want to just get the fire burning so they can get ready for their next matchup, which potentially could be infused, which is kind of the next best team past Dignitas as, right, as of right and now. And they're, they're, they're pretty much their fiercest rivals as well, so you've got to bear that in mind. Yeah, and I was also going to point out that there is some sickness that is striking the Epsilon roster today and yesterday. So yeah, um, that's we, we do have to be aware that, you know, we, we have seen players come out on top, right, with Cygnus, Ogre 2 especially, but uh, it is a different story for them yeah, today. Yeah, it, so. it is one of those ones where the smallest percentage, especially at this high level, can make a difference. Without a but doubt. before we get too much into breaking down this game, we are going to throw it down to Mitch on the floor. Mitch is speaking to the players. G'day, gents. Thank you very much. And hello to everyone at home. It is Championship Sunday here in the ESL Arena, and it is hotting right on up. We'll be chatting with a couple of players in just a moment. I'm standing, of course, next to the gorgeous trophy here, but that's not all these teams are playing for. Of course, we have Epsilon and Supremacy on the stage here, ready to play not only for their shot, of course, at the World Championships, but also a generous slice of the prize pool. But to discuss a little bit with these teams and get a bit of a feel for how they're feeling before the games today, we do have, of course, Jimbo and Unwise on the desk here. Gentlemen, thank you very much for joining me. I hope uh, you rested up well and feeling okay. We'll start with you, Jimbo. Um, the uh, desk did just touch on it briefly for a second there as well. I saw a tweet from Buck20 yesterday saying he's had to quarantine, uh, no, so 57, he's had to quarantine you and uh, one of your teammates overnight. A little bit of sickness over the Epsilon camp. Yeah, we've been traveling a lot lately, come back from Aspen, so a lot, like me and Alex, uh, Buck20 have been quite ill. I'm getting a bit better, it's just my throat's a bit like croaky still, so, and uh, Alex is getting a bit better, so we should be oh. basically back up to where we usually are today anyway. It's pretty wintry in Cologne right now, so fair enough. Yeah. Unwise, thank you, of course, for joining us, thank man. Thank you. Um, look, you guys qualified 
first out of all the French teams, of course, for the yeah. EMEA finals online, and then obviously you went to the French championship land and maybe didn't finish where you guys would have hoped to, uh, being uh, top seed for that tournament. Tell us what you sort of took away from that, what you think that it was that caused you to maybe not place where you would have liked to. Um, we were listening like uh, we were not aggressive enough when we were playing. Uh, we didn't manage to uh, put our, our game and uh, do what we wanted to do. And that cost us the first place of our group. And that's all. So, uh, I mean, the, the, the takeaway from that one for you guys is definitely just to be more aggressive, uh, come forward a little bit more, be proactive, you think? We just have to, like, uh, online we are very aggressive and confident in our game. And just here, coming here, uh, it's uh, the first European event for two of us. And uh, so that's a little more difficult than it should be. Sure. So uh, we just got to settle this and uh, it will be okay. Fantastic. Jimbo, there's a great photo set on Twitter at the moment of Ramirez's reaction to Dignitas getting knocked out. And even a lot of you guys were tweeting about it in shock as well. I mean, uh, is that expected to you? Do you know why that maybe happened? And how does it change the way you view, I guess, the rest of the teams in this uh, elimination bracket? Um, that shocked us a lot. We were playing as it happened on the main stage. So we were like in the middle of a series and we heard that they got knocked down. We're just like, wow. <laughs> like, I, I, I don't know what happened to them. I guess they just didn't turn up on the day. So, um... That kind of made our tournament a bit more smooth. Um, obviously, we've still got hard teams to play against, but like Dig being out of it, I was like, you know, we played them in Gfinity finals, so yeah, no rematch. A, yeah, that that kind of uh, lifts a bit of weight off our shoulder because we know they were gunning for us. No doubt about it. I mean, otherwise, we had two quarterfinals played yesterday and two being played today. Um, obviously, you didn't get to choose who you played up against in the quarterfinals, but what are your thoughts? Would you rather play uh, a qualifying match for the World Championships on the day of, uh, as in on the Saturday, or would you rather have, I guess, the night off and prepare for the day after? Um, I think it depends for, for us yesterday because we were not playing the best that we could. It's better for us than start today, the quarterfinal. So it's, it's better for us, I think. It's a good thing. Feeling fresh, well-rested, and ready to go. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining me. Please shake the old hands and head up to the stage and join your team. It's been a pleasure having you guys on the desk. Thank Best you. of luck for your games coming up. Well, there you go. You've heard it straight from the gentlemen's mouths here. These two are ready to lead their teams into what is going to be an epic quarterfinal. Here it is, Championship Sunday. Gentlemen on the desk, you've heard a little bit from them. Now let's hear from you. Thank you very much there, Mitch. Well, it does seem kind of uh, the usual Epsilon calm before the storm. Supremacy, very realistic about their chances in this matchup. Oh, yeah, without a doubt. I mean, they made a good point, you know, is that sometimes you're hot, sometimes you're not, right? And you come in on Saturday hot, uh, that's a good thing because you'll make it to Sunday for sure, but you want to be on on Sunday. So the fact that they got some rest, um, they weren't playing too well yesterday, and now they get to come in here with a you know, fresh set of... Of, of, of players, it's going to be amazing. I mean, these Supremacy boys, they, they did beat Penta yesterday. Yep. Penta went to X Games. Why can't they beat Epsilon? Epsilon went to X Games. <laughs> easy. Just think about it like that. That's all I, you need to do. That sounds really easy, but I feel like that's not it. All right, let's jump into the Supremacy team profile. Uh, Gasket, you're very familiar with these guys. Do you want to kind of start it off? Yes, yeah, so we've got Punisher, Silent, Unwise, and Frags. So Unwise and Frags are a bit of a duo in this kind of team. Punisher, Raw Slayer. He's an absolute animal with any weapon. These guys, they, they don't want to get anything less than top four. Speaking to them, they said, we know we can do it. We've had the online performances. We're capable of doing it. But like we said, this is one of their first tournaments. Like uh -huh. for two of these guys, they're not really used to the land gameplay. To come against Epsilon, it's going to be tough for them. They really need to step up now. Yeah, that, we, that, that not accepting anything less than top four at EU regionals, well, there's an Epsilon standing in their way. <laughs> yeah, That's literally definitely. the worst draw for them if they want that dream, right? They're, definitely. Like, I mean, Epsilon are the best team in Europe, without a doubt. To come against them, it, it's a hard thing to take, and the mentality has got to be strong from these guys. They've got to think they can win. But you, you heard it. You heard the interview. Worst he possible said, scenario. Yeah, exactly. He said, I mean, it's Epsilon. There's not much we can do against an Epsilon squad with Jimbo on a team. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes you just got to play against the number one ranked team, right? All right, well, let's talk about what they can do to win it. How do Supremacy beat the undefeated Halo 5 EU team of Epsilon? Can they do it, and how do they do it? They just got to keep up the pressure because Jimbo and the Bucks, they're constantly in your face, just not letting you make any moves, especially starting out with Flag yep. uh, on, on their first match. It's, it's not going to be easy for them to, to yep. keep that pressure up, so they're going to have to be just on top of it, just full force working together. And, yeah, teamwork is going to be probably the biggest thing for this mm -hmm. squad. And it sounds like they're, they're definitely happy that they're not playing yesterday. 
but today is a new day. They're yeah. fresh. They're ready to go. They need to be calling out. They need to be working together, and that's going to be the absolute only way they win today. Yeah, and I think another big point, too, is, right, you have Snipe down, you have Jimbo. They're very defined players, right? I mean, you look at the keys to victory right here. We talk about the Jimbo flank, right? We talk about Snipe Drone, Sniper, not to feed him kills. And Snipe Drone, he's not the type of guy that gets in your face, right, with the Sniper. He's very laid back. He lets the he's, Bucks he's and go, Jimbo go like a buck go shield, ahead. Yeah, he, he does. Has, he has that buck shield And I, I talked to, to the Bucks, and he's like, you know, Snipe Drone keeps talking about how he's always just hitting all these shots, and... You know, we're over here rolling our <laughs> <Yeah>. eyes. <laughs> I'm over here taking four bullets in the face, you know, thanks to him. Um, speaking of which, let's actually get right into Epsilon then. These are pretty much the number one seeded team coming into this. Um, a lot of big fans now also in America. Let's kind of get straight oh, into yeah. this team. Neighbor's a big fan of Jimbo. Oh, really? Big fan of Jimbo. All right, well, let's kind of break into it then. Let's talk about this team. They have a, a few small problems coming into this event. One is lack of practice. They've been all over the world, haven't got as much practice as they would want to, and they were slightly sick yesterday. I'd kind of say they actually did get a little bit of practice. Oh, they got that perfect games. practice, land practice, yeah, right? Yeah, they were getting great practice and against teams that are kind of the best in the world, and that's the best practice that you want. And they've always said they kind of struggled because they, they never get to really practice against the NA teams too much. Well, that was their chance. And they not only... Did they get to practice? They got to watch those teams and study their strategies all throughout the tournament. And then them taking down Renegades is another big feat. So they know they're they're on the right track. Whatever they're doing, strat, uh, excuse me, strategically, strategy-wise, uh -huh. uh, they're definitely doing the right thing. So these guys, I, I'd say they're definitely prepared. They look a little bit tired, <laughs> but uh, I think they're they're going to be coming in uh, be extremely hot. All right, let's talk about how Epsilon pulled this one through here because realistically, um, a lot of people at home will be sitting here go, Epsilon, this is just a slam dunk for them. But what do they need to be careful? It, not giving Supremacy any breathing room, that's absolutely correct. If they let Supremacy play like Supremacy have played online, then they're in for a world of pain. Unwise and Silent, this, this little duo, they just run around together. But if they kind of hit the Buck Twins, yeah, who are like say. an even better duo, well, then I think the Buck Two Twins should be able forces to handle them. Meeting. Jimbo, then. He's your key man. And I think what Epsilon, like, really what they've got to be worried about is keeping Jimbo on this roster. Because I think NA teams are going to be kind of looking at Jimbo and saying, hey, like, maybe we should get him on one of our rosters. This guy's amazing. Yeah, he's a great player. I mean, the guy is definitely a playmaker, right? At that, I, I know that the Bucks are really the glue to the team. I know that Snipe Drown's uh, hitting the snipers, uh, the snipe shots, which is amazing. But it's Jimbo constantly that is, is really, you know, changing everything, right? Whether it's changing the flow of the map or the way the game type's going, he's always in everyone's face and making something happen. So that's kind of interesting what you guys are talking about here in terms of Epsilon. You're talking about the various parts of them. You've got Snipe Drown, who's great picking up those snipers. Jimbo making plays, and the Buck Twins have this fantastic chemistry to keep the glue together. Yeah. Do you think that's why they're such a good team. There's just these fantastic components that have all come together. And while the, you know, the light may shine on Jimbo, it may shine on Snipe Drone, yep. the Bucks, you know, maybe they don't get as much credit as they deserve. They because they're, they're, like I said, they're almost they a shield of points. They're just making sure that nobody can get near their, their Snipe Drone or any near power weapons. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and uh, actually, I wanted to touch back on what you said, Gaskin, to seeing Jimbo make it onto a top NA team. I'd actually just love to see these guys stick together. Yeah. They beat Renegades. They are a top team yep. in the NA. So yeah. to see these guys progress over through the years and they have not switched up their team. I mean, I mean that's a big success to any deal. team. Huge deal. And that's you look at, you look at uh, other teams, right, in Counter-Strike and in, in League of Legends and Dota, all these teams, they stick together. They represent their country, their area of the world, right? And and you look at Luminosity Gaming, this Brazilian team yeah. that's come up, and they've stuck together. They've even, you know, brought new Brazilian players onto the team. And I think that what we have here with Epsilon is just absolutely fantastic. I would hate to see any of them break up. All right. Well, guys, it's time to pretty much get this one underway. So let's get hot with the predictions. Ghost Yami, let's start with you. And please, for once, actually pick the team you think's going to win, not Well, you know what? I'm going to go and say that I think that Sickness... You know, can be a little pain in the ass at times. And uh, when, uh, it's, when it's striking one buck and one Jimbo... I just want you aware that you got no predictions uh, right yesterday. None. You know, today's a new day. You went 0-8. and eight. Championship it's, Sunday, It's like everybody. your breakout record. No, it's... it's uh, <laughs> that was, I think, 0-5. and five. Anyways, um, point being, though, is that, uh, yeah, I, I think that Supremacy could take it. They aren't struck with sickness, right? They do have a new day and, and a new outlook. And, I mean, what do you have to lose as them, right? If, if they win, then they're the, the best upset of the entire weekend, yeah. without a doubt. And if they lose, then, hey, it was just another... Uh, you, you got drawn the bad bracket, right? Yeah. So uh, I think that really they just have to go in and have fun. Yeah. 
Yeah, all right. Well, I'm going to have to choose uh, Epsilon. I'm going to say Epsilon 3-0. Oh, okay. These guys oh, are, even though they're a little bit sick, they're going to be coming in strong, especially from the X Games. They're feeling so confident after their recent gameplay. And, uh, yeah, these guys, they're not going to slow up at all. Yeah, I was going to go with 3-0, but, okay, I'll, I'll go with 3-1. We've got Team Slayer Coliseum, second game. We've seen how the French teams kind of perform <coughs> on this map. So, yeah, yep. we'll, we'll go 3-1. I think Supremacy will take That's one That's a good game. call, then. Okay, okay. Analysis panel again divided on the way the throne is predicted around. Basically, it just goes to the army every time. It's uh, going to happen, <laughs> right? Hashtag, Sometimes hashtag, you hit the jackpot. It's still Sims' fault. Hashtag blame Sims. Yeah, by anyway, the way. for those of you at home, let us know what you think. Who are you rooting for? Who do you think is going to win? Hashtag Halo WC. Please let us know. But it is time to get this one underway. It's Epsilon versus Supremacy. Let's hand it over to the casters, Bravo and Sims. Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to the commentary booth. My name is Sims, this beautiful man with wonderful teeth. Oh, you're going for the handshake? I am. Is that what we're doing? No, yes. more, no more fist bumping? No, no, no. This is a proper championship Sunday, and I'm excited to kick things off. Are we letting go yet? Yep. There we go. We'll right. let go. <laughs> anyway, welcome along. It's going to be a great, fantastic day today. Two more teams will be sent to Worlds. Obviously, last night, we sent two more teams from the, uh, the Australian regionals. Yeah, it's exciting to see. I mean, uh, throughout the entire tournament, it's been cool to kind of... You, you wake up, and, and, and every time you check Twitter, there's new teams that are competing, that have entered, that have qualified, that have now been sent to world. So obviously here, I mean, this weekend is quite a, a weekend for competitive Halo. We're sending the EMEA regional finals teams. We just saw the uh, Australia teams. I believe it's Immunity and Exile, I believe, are headed over. That would be the one, yes. Yeah, uh, from Australia. Also, Optic Gaming qualifies in North America in a 50-49 win. Uh, I was up in Ghost's room for a while watching with him last night, and then, of course, uh, I got a text at 4.30 in the morning from strong side <laughs> who had been passed out he's like hey come over because now we're watching and i'm awake but uh it feels like every moment there's no, there's no proper time to sleep uh, globally if you're a competitive halo fan right now because you want to catch all the action uh so it's been an absolutely fantastic weekend but like you said we're going to send two more teams to the finals today uh, we have two more quarterfinals up that will determine exactly who those squads will be. And one of these teams right now will be decided and go forward. Let's take a quick look how we're going to break this one down across the board. Your best of five series is now on screen, guys. Kicking things off, game number one. A nice little Fathom CTF to wake the boys up in the morning. Moving game number two, Coliseum Team Slayer. Eden Strongholds for game number three. And if it's needed, Truth, CTF, and Regret Team Slayer for games four and five. Remember, guys, one of these teams will be walking away with a nice little plane ticket to the Halo World Championship Grand Finals after this game. It's not going to be an easy one, though, Bravo. You know, for, for Supremacy, at the end of the day, you are going against Europe's finest here. These guys, you heard it in the pre-show. They come off of the big... That was a big win against Renegades back at Aspen. Oh, it really was, and I think they're feeling good, except perhaps a bit buck 20 there on your screen who might actually be wanting to fall asleep. Uh, but these guys, uh, they look strong. <laughs> As uh, His brother there, Buck57, gives him a tap and says, hey, get your head off the table because we're on camera right now to the entire world. This trophy right here is what they're playing for. Uh, but, I mean, regardless, of, of illness and, and how uh, you know well or t well not well or tired the Epsilon might be feeling I think they're going to be a pretty strong crew here in this match here's your head-to-head -head matchup Snipe Throne Buck 20 Buck 57 and Jimbo going up against Punisher Silent Unwise and Fragzer not going to be an easy game by any means but you know what it's going to be a good one we can see the boys on the top Epsilon getting ready to rock and roll you know what I've kind of noticed this Andy is the team always seems to win is the one who's most lights up in the pre-game. You know, the hands shakes, the fist bumps, yeah. the ones. That's why we just sat there a bit worried. Yeah, I think, I mean, Epsilon's going to come out hammering. And what a game t game one to kick it off, Sims. I mean, Fathom CTF is a very, very demanding, demanding game where you constantly need to be ready to go here. We're starting things off here with Frags of Supremacy, but uh, off the gate, you know, you're going to have to have flag poles. You're going to need to be super quick. And if you're not warmed up, this game type will bite you in the butt. Decides to grab himself the Storm Rifle. One kill to finish it off. Seals the deal, help his teammate out. Jumbo's going to be up top mid. More than likely going to be grabbing the railgun, something he's well known for, just being an absolute power weapon beast. There's a double kill. Easy way to start the morning off. Going to challenge this one, decides to thrust back. Grenade goes in, no hit marks for that. Nice little crouch down. 
We'll get his shields back, and just as soon as I say that, Andy, we're going to see another flag being moved up there into the treehouse. Mike, a.k.a. Snipe Drone, will be waiting, catches him with the side of the railgun, puts one in his face, seals the deal. Snipe Drone now moving the flag. Yeah, Snipe Drone actually has no shield, so uh, Jimbo has to be really careful with how he escorts this flag. He's done a great job so far, and Snipe Drone's actually using the top mid run. And one thing that I have to say, literally, that was textbook. You saw several teammates, and this is what Jimbo's now, killing spree for him. Been an absolute nuisance. Nobody can really get him off there, challenges that one, getting a little bit overzealous, I think. In comes Snipe Drone puts one on the board for Epsilon Esports. Yeah, as a nice job there. I mean, you can tell he actually missed that jump several times. We'll go over to Punisher on Supremacy, but Snipe Drone actually missed that front jump, and I think even missed a flag grab two or three times. Uh, but his, he was still able to bring that flag in almost untouched, which is just an indicator of, of how much uh, his team had control, right? If you're able to miss those fumbles and still get the flag in, and you're sitting pretty. But we'll go over to Buck 57 on the other side. That was a rather unlucky grenade there, because they almost hit the triple kill. His teammate did come in, so they had some bit of support. He goes down as well, moving back to Jimbo. Over on the red back, grenades going, looking to get some hit markers. Frank has now taken top mid. And we did say in the keys to victory, the very key for these guys was one, locking down Jimbo, two, keeping that top middle section, and of course, the real gun on the spawn. That's what Jimbo did for the first camp. Book 20 now comes up. I believe he may have his brother in tow behind him, two of them pushing him down now. As we see him just crouching, they've no idea where he has just bit from the radar. As soon as I say that, someone pokes out from the garage, takes him down. One player sliding in. Silent goes down, curse the caster. We move on board with him. Let's jump back on board with Wise. Yeah, here we are now, unwise of supremacy, of course. They need to really really turn it on because they're only playing the three captures here. They don't want to drop this game one too quickly. His flag is out and doesn't look like they know. Uh, unfortunately, with that grenade missing, he's going to have to retreat a little bit more and make sure he gets kills here with his squad. But he's in a great position, especially, you know, takes down the double there. He's now yep. going to get the pole moving. He's going to jump out into the, the pit run. Yep. Personally for you, are you a big fan of the pit or going through the treehouse? No, I hate the pit run. Uh, right now, he's going to get away with it, though. But So, you know, it, I might be being proven wrong with these squads. I'll certainly be open to that possibility. We'll have to see if it pays off for him, though. Flags are both in their corresponding, excuse me, in their opposite bases. Uh, Buck 57 with the Supremacy flag and Unwise now with the Epsilon flag. And they're actually sitting in the exact same windows, almost the exact same spots. Here you go. Take a look across the map. Here's Unwise and here's Buck 57, both trying to play a little bit of offensive roles. But Unwise is going to have the SMG on Jimbo to take him down. So a little bit of a stalemate here. A little bit of help as well. He probably would have gone down there, Jim, obviously slides in, crouched back down. In this kind of standoff scenario, though, Andy, what's the best thing teams want to be lo looking to do? Obviously, it's a stalemate, it's a stand-up. Mm -hmm. You've got one, you're essentially three on three out yeah. in the open. What's the kind of play here to get this flag back? I mean, one of my favorite things to do is actually have your flag uh, in a, in a non-traditional location, like a tree house. I mean, crazy teams might even try to bring that flag top mid for a second if you have to get help, you know. Uh, it, as long as you have slaying control, you can put your flag in a pretty offensive position which can watch spawns it can watch certain routes there's a lot of things your flag carrier can do you can light up the enemy flag etc so i liked what i saw at in aspen with some of the north american teams actually taking the flag to treehouse to get a new sight line on their opponent uh, right now i'm kind of surprised that jimbo is getting away with this right now but eventually he will fall so to keep a look at the flags we have buck 57 still uh, here in red base and we also still have unwise still in his base with the corresponding flags but snipe drone is doing work with the smg trying to make a push but he will fall that means there's too dead for Epsilon. So I'm looking at Jimbo as the only player who's kind of hanging out at the 50-yard line uh, right now to make sure... Right now, not surprised that he's not pushing right in. That's a good play because this flag carrier for a moment was actually left alone. But with Snipe Drone and Buck 20 spawning, they're they're fine now. So Jimbo is the single player on the offensive. Frags are attempts to get away, but you're not getting away from Jimbo's magnum. Not that easy for sure. Oh. He's going to drop down, kicks the bag, and the guy was only one shot. We'll grab the Ooh. Q. Is that oh, burn? No. Did he get that? Uh, let's see. Uh, we're going to take a look if there was any burn. To looking across at all the screens, did not get a good read on whether or not there was a burn. Here's Snipe Drone. Though. Interesting that Jim went for that camo. I mean, the camo, of course, has a priority. If you can get camo rail, you could pretty much kill the flag, but that left the flag carrier still alive. So we're still here at this standoff. And this is exactly what we saw, actually, Sims, at X Games on the final Saturday because the, neither team wants to make that mistake, right? They're playing super, super patient. Actually, Snipe Drone, we got to stay with him because he's trying to get this grab right now. And, yes, it looks like Epsilon is able to get the return. They're going to bring this in. But what we're seeing is some really disciplined play here, Sims. Neither team wants to be the one that makes really the mistake that ends the game. Look at that perfect kill for Snipe Drone. What an incredible kill. Reversal Metal also comes in, hits him four times in the face. Down he goes. A couple of grenades going to come in. He's just going to wait there and chill for a little while. Another one comes in as well off the assist. You see the little golden arrow popping up on the side. Silent's going to challenge him. Misses that fourth shot. He's going to be back. Going to be one shot left in the treehouse now. Going to push back out. We can see off the screen there in the kill feed. 
Fragza has control of the real gun. Probably going to be top mid as we say that. He actually lands blue screen straight in the face. On board now with Fragza. Controlling this section, which is what exactly kind of what they need to do. But you know what, Bravo? The two flags down. The pressure is really on them. That is indeed. But I like what I'm seeing from Supremacy here as they're able to hold this top mid area. We'll go into a listening in just a moment with Epsilon to see exactly what they're doing right. But Supremacy tries to make something happen. You can tell that Fragza is not in a position to push here. Eventually, he will fall. Let's go back over to Jimbo and get ready for a listening here with Epsilon Esports as they're so far dominating this match. He's on the Mike. Nice Nice. 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 I'm going for it. No, guys, let's do it. I died, dude. I died. Can stay alive Alex? I'm on Trey. I'm on Trey. I'm watching Death Gun, Mike. I'm on Trey. 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 I'
uh, is on the level of a lot of top North American players. I think the speed at which he understands the flow of the game, the routes, the decisions he makes, he has a very practical approach to, to Halo 5, right? I mean, if you kind of ask him, you know, he'll, he'll just kind of be pretty modest, shrug his shoulders and yeah. tell you, hey, I just, you know, I play the game a lot, um, which I think speaks a lot to just how individually talented he is. And there's a lot that needs to be said about the decisions that he makes and the routes he takes, the angles, the sight lines. Um, I think he's a no-nonsense player. I don't know if you'd agree, but the, the, the yeah. decisions he makes, he's not going to jump out to do some flashy wild thing, right? When he hits the ground pounds, it's actually because it's a tact, you know, from, in terms from like tactics, it's a wise decision, right? It is yeah. looking at all of his options, it, 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 it kind of covers everything. Uh, whereas there's some players that will tee up that ground pound to try to actually get a little bit more of a flashy play. Jimbo's a guy who knows this game in and out. He masters the Spartan abilities, and I think that's allowed him to, to really find success in this game. And so far, it's doing him exactly that moving forward into game number two. Let's see if he can put up just as many numbers on there. Probably look to this one, especially being a Slayer type with a sniper on the on the map. We're looking for uh, Mr. Snipe Drone to be doing some serious damage again. We saw him yesterday yep. hanging on that oh. red corner, just yep. picking faces then, off at the spawn. Yeah, especially the, the, yeah, that rocket corner sniping he was doing was disgusting. Especially the angles he was getting off of red ledge allowed him to actually just see the spawners outright. Uh, just seconds after they spawned behind that back bl uh, blue rocket corner. Uh, so we'll have to see if they can do that. But, I mean, like Gaskin said in the pregame, we have seen that the French teams can play Coliseum pretty well. Uh, Coliseum isn't too different from Fathom. There's times when you need to play really fast, and there's times when you need to play slower. It applies to the TTS as well for this map. So we're going to have to see which can kick it off. I think we have to kick things off with Jimbo uh, after that performance from game one. So let's go ahead and do just that. Moving forward then, looks like he's going to take the rocket route, moving up Red Street now. Couple gets the uh, splinters in the back pocket, in goes one grenade, looking for the second to play there. No, him, hit markers on it yet, going to back off. I think he actually Ooh. just probably, I almost said he cracked someone straight in the face with a splinter, but it was actually the opposite way around. As Silent now will push up onto the rockets. Not entirely sure who has sniper rifle in hand. It's going to be uh, actually unwise on the Supremacy side as well. So all power weapons in the hands of Supremacy. So we can see the two different power weapons now on this side. Let's see where he moves this route. 57 does take down Frags on the kill feed. Someone's up at the sniper. That's going to be Jimbo coming back to put some more pressure on him. Rockets are in hand, though. And the sniper rifle's still in play. Jimbo coming in with a ground pound straight off the side there on Punisher. One rocket in, one kill. Please reload it. One thing that really annoys me when Z plays just hanging around reloading it. Goes to the launch. Doesn't get any. Another one comes in down on fridge. Oh, he goes down. That's going to be it. But I think all power weapons are going to fall in the hands now of Epsilon as they have stolen everything. So here we have Snipe Drone is going to start doing some damage. Take a look at the stats from this weekend. Damage total here 7,100. Uh, I guess we'll find out from production. I believe this is his best accuracy, his best damage dealt, and also KDA for the weekend. I believe now 3.24 and his top damage 71. 100 in a match, which is quite absurd. You can imagine that would require, of course, more of a 15-minute game there of CTF. But 63% accuracy isn't too shabby as well. One thing I've got to say, Andy, as well, he is a very keen anchor all the time. You'll see him grab the sniper. A lot of the time, I'll see people quite been aggressive and moving. Like Speed, for instance. If this was Speed right now, that was a brilliantly placed grenade. Gets the reversal medal as well. Unfortunately, does go down. Landed that one perfectly. But let's look at a player like Speed from Fabi. He'd quite easily go over to the sniper section yep. and try and catch people on spawn. Mike will quite have just sit back, anchor yep. the corner, stop people going for the rockets as well, which is quite important, and just kill people now in the hot seat with Bug20. That's right. Now, Bug20 actually falls with some good pressure there from the other side. So we'll go over to Unwise. We heard from him in the pregame. Uh, they're tied 12 to 12, so they're looking a little bit better here uh, so far, sticking with uh, the Epsilon Esports crew in this match. They had a little bit of an early lead, but that was quickly shut down as they lost all power weapons. Supremacy needs to get out of this front base. I don't like where they are right here in bottom blue. They need to just push out a little bit, get some shape, uh, because right now you don't want to be sitting front base, back base. Rockets, of course, are up. There is one player next to those rockets. Let's see if he can, they can acquire them and put it in their pocket. It's going to be Jimbo coming in with the scatter shot. Grenade lands right in his face. He gets a tangerine to the eyeballs down. He goes sniper drone, putting some pressure on. Nice shot from Unwise. Didn't really manage that. Does find a sniper rifle on the floor. Let's see if he can put this to good use. Needs to be careful. Grenades are coming in thick and fast. He's only one shot. Jumping out on one shot, possibly not the best move in the world, but you know what? He survived. Looking at those rockets, there's Buck 20. Gets one to the leg. Yeah, that's Teammate great. will clean him up, but the rockets are going to be vitally important here if they want to survive. Please whip out your magnum. Yes, he does indeed. Wow. I mean, finished him off. Yeah, he took his time there. You see that little bit of an ogre twitch as he peeks through the, the flag the base to twitch. see if anyone's poking up, but I, I, I like what I saw just there. That was really a moment of truth for me because Unwise was taking a look at rockets. He was potentially going to get sandwiched. Uh, he hits a body shot. His teammate cleans it up, and then 
then he hits the no scope. He took his time, then he finished it with a magnum. Looks like, look at that, getting another distraction middle. So we're actually seeing some some really disciplined play out of Unwise and Supremacy. For me, uh, right there was a moment of can they win this match? And and I think we just answered yes uh, that they're able to do it. But my oh, holy mother! <laughs> oh. We did not see that one happen. Buck twenty trying to hit the ground pound, and and once again probably uh, cre a crafty angle and not a terrible decision as he tries to hit that. But he actually will fall because Snipe Drone on the other side has a sniper rifle. So uh, Epsilon is down by about three kills here. But Snipe Drone, sniper in hand, this is dangerous. I don't think anybody saw that one coming. Came with the ground pound, hitting between the eyeballs. Snipe Drone as well doing the same. Puts one in the back of a player's head. That's going to be unwise. Putting around for this second player. Silence being called out. Got to wonder why he stopped shooting there. Two. Yeah, you got to wonder why he stopped shooting there. Generally, if a player switches weapons, it's because they kind of think that last headshot will be the final blow. And, and they're moving so fast, right? They're, they're, they're so intense in this game that they kind of keep going. But doesn't actually clean up that kill. And that's a, that's a loss because uh, unable to clear out that side of the map. However, as long as he keeps hitting headshots like this, he's going to put his team in a position to win the game, but they're down by five. And again, but look at how disciplined he is. Oh, he's I, just I, staying here. He's not moving. He's got teammate for support. His teammates just grab yep. Rock. He's now going to push back. Needs to be obviously aware of this guy in the red kit, which I still believe is there. They need to get off catwalk. That's that, the that, second time he's right. the same player there. And it was Fragzer. Okay, see, that's very, very undisciplined play. And, and, and when he goes back and watches this match, he needs to realize that you don't get shot in the same place. You don't go to the same place when the enemy team has the same exact sniper and it's not good if you're getting killed like that. I mean, I'm actually watching Jimbo off screen using ground pounds to avoid grenades across bottom green. Fragzer again a third time. He's exposing himself to this angle time and time again and Snipe Jones is going to keep watching. However, luckily for Fragzer, I mean, Supremacy is actually doing a fine job keeping up the pressure. They had a sniper rifle before. Uh, they've lost that since, but we're staying on board with Snipe Drone. However, his team hasn't gotten back in this, but if I'm looking and once again, we'll see who's going to get cleaned up here uh, on that side. I thought he might go for that uh, shot, but it looks like rockets are still in the hand of Buck 50 we're going to show you that really quick because he's actually gone all the way to the enemy cave uh, behind enemy lines, but wisely retreats. I like that decision. No need to push. Uh, they're, they're playing this slow, uh, which I think is what they need to do. They're down by two, and I tell you what, they're about to come back. And that, that's the thing we, we say about the comeback now. I don't think he's going to get that kill, which he does. He does fall. 32 to 34, two kill game, and this is all because they've let Snipe Drone be on that second thing. And, and if they wouldn't have given away those three kills, it yep. would have been even bigger lead. Fragzer pushes again to try to take down Snipe Drone, but finally, Snipe Drone will fall with help, I believe, from Unwise, or Silent, who are both a red, but Punisher is a blue. So they're spread out pretty nice right now, but Supremacy needs to, there's a great nades there, of course, grabbing the assist, but Supremacy needs to realize that they are split up right now, that they have players at red who are dying, and they have a player at blue, and they're about to lose the lead if, if they don't get control of Green Tower. Sniper's coming up at 10 seconds, Sims. Let's see who grabs these, then again, the Rockets are also dropping. Punisher's still in bottom mid, not the best place to be. He's going to root round up to the red bridge, moving back. He's going to probably grab these Rockets off the spawn, looking across straight at S3. Yep. Nobody's there. His teammate's there as well. One person drops. Ping. That's a great rocket. Unfortunately, didn't seal the deal. We did hear him clip. Yep. So someone's probably going to grab that kill. Him. No assist though comes in, which is disappointing. I'd like to see one now. 39 to 38 now. Only a one kill That's lead. right. Very fragile. Andy, any sniper rifle in play? I'm taking a look across the screens. Of course, the sniper did just drop. And yes, indeed, it's going to be in the hands of Jimbo. So I'm keeping an eye on Jimbo, who's sniping from back red. This is dangerous. Of course, uh, Punisher doesn't want to get exposed himself. Uh, he's in a great place right now, as long as he doesn't cut across or get too exposed on catwalk. Uh, looks like three players actually die. So we're going to go over to Jimbo in just a second. Actually, we'll stay with Supremacy, but Jimbo now has the sniper rifle, and all three of his teammates died. Jimbo is in the spot that he loves to be, and I'll show you really quick. He's on this red street. So now back over to Punisher with the rockets in hand. He might expose himself to Jimbo. Let's see if he's able to connect with that. He gets a hit marker, so Silent will clean it up, and I tell you what, Supremacy is looking strong as they try to close this out. That's going to be a massive kill. Sniper rifle goes down, and so of course does Jimbo with that scatter shot. Scatter shot back in place. Silent answers back on book 20 straight off the spawn. He does go down, unfortunately, needs to be careful with these splinting in. Like a little bit of a landmine. One person downstairs now. Buck again, this scatter shot yep. is quite playing a big role in this game, Yeah, got to go to Buck 57 there. He has sniper and scatter shot, but he will fall. Let's take a look at who was pushing them, and I believe that was Fragzer as well as Punisher and Silent. They're all on the red side of the map. Silent will fall. Punisher tries to make something happen. Now over to Fragzer. 46 to 44, two kill game. At this point, I think it'd be great for the French community if we could go to a French listening right now. I want to hear what these guys are going to say. Obviously, I don't understand French, unfortunately, but I'm sure the French community will. One person goes down. It's only four kill, five kill game now. If we can go to a listening, we will do at this point. Jumping on still with Punisher. Looking around this bottom fridge section. Just so oh, unfortunately, 
no, we did not see the splinter grenade that's going to cost them. It's now 46-47. Epsilon down by one. And right now, Buck 57, Cyber Rifle in hand. Four minutes on the clock. It's a one-kill match. This is going to come all the way down to the wire. And I believe, quote me if I'm wrong here, this could be the oh, first game. Let's see, he did just drop. Event. Keep in mind, he just dropped Snipe for Snipe Drone. So we got to go over to Snipe Drone, who ties the game. No, no, they're up by one now, 48 to 47. It's rich back round. We're going to steep in the game at this moment in time. Now a tied up game. Only two kills. 350 on the clock. Rock is in the hand of Jimbo. Takes it. There's one. Looking for a second one. If he gets chased, he's going to land straight beneath his feet. Jumps up now. Can Jimbo save the day to stop? Any games be given away. Bit of a YOLO rocket there. Did get the hit mark. Is calling for 57. Will come. He's going to come back down a little bit now in this moment in time as he's oh, still man. hovering around this S3 area. He's got one rocket. He knows he can seal the deal with this single. Let's see. And there's actually there's one player in that cave. Oh, if Jimbo had just shot it, he would have hit there. But look, he's going to try to peek in there. I guess the kill. Yes. Jimbo closes it out 50 to 48. A very strong finish from Epsilon Esports. And Sim, I hate to say it. We kind of felt like Supremacy's lead was too fragile throughout the entire match. Moments like the same player dying from the same sniper three deaths in a row, that's an indicator that that lead is slipping away, right? Those are non-disciplined decisions, exposing yourself to that same angle. Uh, and I tell you what, I mean, the story of the match was just Snipe Drone and Jimbo consistently stealing those power weapons. Jimbo at the end, I mean, he had so many rockets to fire, right? He missed two, didn't get a single kill with them, and gets the luxury of shooting a third to win 50-48. Keep in mind, Snipe Drone had the sniper in his favorite spot, right? Right around the street, right around the rocket corner. So they were pinched. They couldn't poke out bridge. They could not come around rocket corner. They had to sit in the back flag and back cave. And as a result, that gives Jimbo all the luxury in the world to kind of just swoop around because he had full air cover. What kind of annoys me a little bit, Andy, is the fact that we as casters sit and we say, we know what Snipe Drone's going to do. He's going to sit there in the back of red, you know, in the corner, jump up on the ledge, get the snipes off the spawn, and bam, what did he do? One person fed him three kills, 17 to nine. The most Passive player yep. with the sniper rifle on that team. Felt like we he was... knew what he were going to do. Yep. Why didn't they shut him down? And why did they? They just we put in the keys to victory. Do not feed snipe drone. What did they do? They should have read the keys to victory, Sims. Those are great keys to victory that you put together, and they should have read them. But I mean, I mean, hindsight's a great thing. Don't get me wrong, but but I know what's going to happen. I I felt like it's pretty undisciplined from supremacy. Sometimes there are examples of you are spawn trapped in a base and the enemy is pushing you so hard that you're going to get sniped off of spawn, right? Think about your classic Halo 2 Sanctuary, your H2A Sanctuary, right? That happens sometimes, and there's nothing you can do about it. The angles that Fragster specifically was getting ripped from, yep. Catwalk twice and Fountain, he needs to know that those are all exposed to Red Rocket Corner, and, and th there's ways to avoid that, right? You go up snipe, you go green, you go cave, you go l low even. There's ways to not get clipped by that angle, uh, but that's not what we saw. If we look at those spawns that he had three in a row, right, frags are on your screen, uh, that's the game difference. It's a 50-48 match. But, uh, of course, got to give credit to the entire Epsilon squad for kind of pushing them back. Jimbo as well doing a great job. And I have to say, as much as I'm, you know, harping about Supremacy's uh, lack of discipline in that match, they played well throughout, you know, 60, 70% yeah. of that the match. Game that Epsilon right. had, yeah. and, and, they, and they put up a really good fight. So as, as much as I'm giving them a hard time, the, the French players, there do deserve credit they played a good match uh and they need to just carry the the the, the mem momentum from their success early in the match and and the knowledge that they can beat epsilon as long as they stick on their game into this game number three uh they, they certainly can hang on here but it's going to be a tough road in the series let's bring up the uh, the map pool on screen then and show you how this one is going to be playing out as we move on into game number three here we are eden strongholds game four and five truth ctf and regret team slayers so let's have a quick word before we do and they want to give a shout out to everyone over on halo waypoint.com reddit halo team beyond hs live tweets and halo esports pd and of course yep. halo tracker on twitter and the nice guys over at hcs now some of their youtube content as of recent has been fantastic yeah, i was gonna say the halo tracker guys of course got to give them a shout uh, as well as hcs now and really anyone who's you know has been tuning in to the halo world championship from around the globe it's it's particularly special for us to be able to visit these different cities and kind of meet everyone who's so passionate last night just hanging out with some german fans who have been playing you know every single halo title as i know many of you watching at home have been doing so it's it's been really special to see everyone kind of get involved and see the the hcs and the hcs WC tour uh, kind of stopping at these different places around the globe and you know Sims it's crazy to say it but we are nearing the end of this tournament right we are starting to send teams to the finals uh, in just a few weeks regional finals will be completed and we'll be setting our sights on the grand finals in March 
Once again, here's all eight players on your screen. Epsilon Esports winning the first two matches. Supremacy needs to answer back now on Strongholds Eden. And if I watch how they played Coliseum, I think there's a chance that they can do this, but they just need to make sure they play discipline throughout the entirety of this match. I've been saying it all weekend, but you need to play this game to 100 points. You need to play the long game. And here we are then, Strongholds Eden. When we were casting yesterday, one of the pivotal points was Chalky for infused with those rockets. He absolutely abused it, moving back and forth between Bend yep. and Ness, just going, he get it on a strap killing frenzy with those things on board with snipe drone straight up the spawn jumps down bottom mid will grab himself the br hunting this one person that's gonna be punisher kind of challenge him he was two shots down personally and fair enough there's nowhere really to go but punisher needs to be very careful after what he did last time so he's moving across to blue bend for grenades going we've seen some hit markers already puts one up on the sneak and see if anyone wants to try and challenge that in comes a new combo i think he may have hit oh, his teammate I, behind him i was gonna say buck 20 had overshield and rockets his overshield is already gone so i believe he may have gotten combo from the let's see if i actually look at who might have had that combo i think that might have been indeed the case snipe drone will stay alive though and they're going to get some early control in in this match and Epsilon of course off to a pretty solid start uh, we're not seeing total control of the uh, from them off the break but I think that's the team that Epsilon is right they kind of play that methodical no need to force everything kind of style but just as quickly as I say that they go for the total control and now they have all three so control is in full effect we've just seen Snipe drone find one person can be punished running across puts three in his chest unwise there he's duo back from the hill of three days to help My him out but you know what he's been super aggressive lands one he's no. only got one bullet left wow I don't oh. think I, he was so so excited about possibly just defeating two players in a 1v2 that he just pops out with barely any ammo in the clip misses that last shot but buck 57 comes in and finishes the day challenges there i'm not so sure about that one he lays some shots down a buck 20 probably could have came into close but a little bit of a lack of communication but not to worry because they're already up 22 to zero now over to silent on the supremacy side and as we go across he dies just as quickly but they have taken back next couple of points now back on the board for supremacy on wise camping around Light rifle in hand, trying to see if he can take anyone down. Will he challenge this one? He'd be dangerous. So, but he does, and he stronghold defense as well. Unfortunately, I think Jimbo's still in there to transfer it back in his hands. Going to run around, see if anyone else wants to come up. That's 57 hiding behind the stronghold point yep. down. He goes, did great defense from there. Will also get the reset. Now we're on board with Jimbo as he's throwing some grenades and trying to find any hit markers. So anybody who's in the top mid section, Andy, break down the damage done of Jimbo, though, almost at 10K. Yeah, it's pretty incredible there. You see 2.02 KD for Jimbo here. Here also 54.6% accuracy. So now laying down this shot. Looks like Ooh. did he get the overshot steal? No, he did not. He did not. Unwise actually is able to steal it. And then Unwise gets lit up. Jimbo comes in with that. Fragzer had the rockets for a second. I have to look across to see where those rockets are even going to end up. No one's in position to grab them. So we'll go on board with Silent. I'll keep an eye on who might go blue band to steal those. What we'll do is after this, hopefully Gusty Ami can get us the replay of that. Because to be honest with you, you saw him grab the OS, but three people dog piled onto him. The OS didn't last more. Fair enough, he didn't get the burn in the end, but the OS was shut down as instantly as it was picked up, and that's kind of pretty much Epsilon's game as a whole. If someone else has the power weapons, fair enough, we don't have them. Let's shut them down and bring them back into the hands of us. Buck 57, one-on-one -on -one with Punisher. Punisher goes flying down just as quickly as that. He gets the call out for Unwise. Unwise will back down. He doesn't get the challenge. Moving across to Punisher, who's got his shields back. He's going to transfer this around. Obviously, he's picked up the BR from bottom mid. Fine snipe drone crouching around in the catwalk. He he goes down. This is going to be a great play if you can get this kill. But you know what? Buck 20 says, not today, my son. That's going to be my catwalk. Get the hell out of here. Still moving across to Unwise again. A very deathy kind of game here. Back and forth, back and forth. Moving into the catwalk. They really don't want to let them guess. We've got Buck 57 who's flashing. They need to finish that kill, which they do. You can see in the kill feed there. Fragzer grabs it. Still looking at redness as we see catwalk is about to be transferred but you know what i've only just realized Andy, total control yep. he's taking his toll on the score line it definitely is i was just going to say it was just about 30 to 19 which wasn't terrible but unwise will fall due to that total control uh, excuse me the scoreboard will really turn due to that total control but i'd love to give some love to the french community here go into a listen in with supremacy see if they can bounce back in this match <laughs> Ça pose pour nous. Ça en dessous. Ça se pose en bas du pont rouge. Je marche, je marche. Ni rouge, ni rouge, ça arrive. Ça arrive. Je suis mort. 
La passerelle, ta passerelle, ça prend ma note, ta passerelle, ta passerelle. Prenez les rouges, prenez les rouges, prenez les rouges. Devant le camo, les gars. C'est où, c'est où, c'est où, c'est où. Ta passerelle, watch out, ta passerelle, watch out, les gars. J'ai touché encore, j'arrive, j'arrive. C'est moi, le chat, 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 c'est je suis mort, je suis mort, je suis mort, je suis mort. Allez, 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 les gars, allez, allez. Ils sont morts, ils sont morts. Ça, ça va, ni rouge, ça va, ni rouge, ni rouge maintenant. Ça va, passerelle, essaye de prendre la passerelle. Sony, défense, Sony, défense, ni rouge, on passe, ni rouge, ça se monte top rouge, ça se monte top rouge. Pour rouge, pour rouge. Je suis mort, je suis mort. Il y a la rock, passerelle. Il y a un rock, passerelle, il y a un rock, passerelle. Pour rouge, il y a un mec. One shot sur moi, one shot. One shot, 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 one Nice, ça, un mort, un mort, un mort. Faut tuer des rouges, faut le tuer, faut le tuer, allez les gars. Faut le tuer, 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 faut le le mec est parti en bleu Vers le bleu, vers le bleu, vers le bleu, vers le bleu, Tu vas faire ton bleu, vers le 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 bleu, vers Nice, nice, 40 Faut qu'on prenne un truc, les mecs, faut qu'on prenne un truc. Allez, les gars, faut mettre de l'intensité, faut mettre de l'intensité, c'est pas perdu. One shot sur la rock, nice. Virage bleu, non On arrive, on arrive, virage bleu. On arrive, Sonny, on arrive. Reste en vie, Sonny, reste en vie. Ni rouge, la rock, va ni rouge, la rock, va ni rouge. Punisher with the OS thing. Can he make this catwalk challenge? Yes, he does. Star Killer Metal also comes in, making great work of the OS right now. Andy, they've really brought this yeah. to Epsilon, brought it back in, and the, the slain power so far coming out of Supremacy is probably more than Look what we've seen out the entire of the games. Yeah. Then we've got the three total cap yep. now. But actually, they're, they're getting loud still. in there, Sims. We are in an entirely different studio than the actual main stage, but we can hear their team and their crowd there yelling for them. It's six, 77 to 64 total control for a moment for Supremacy, but they will remain scoring. Sims, I tell you what, I have absolutely no idea what they were saying during that listen-in, but they were doing something right. Uh, I'm sure all of our French viewers here uh, know that that is the case indeed. Seven-point match. Getting hyped in the chat, ladies and gentlemen. We've got a bit of a game on our hands. 77 to 71. They've still got control of two plots. Oh, However, man. double kill in from Book 57. He could be the savior that Epsilon needed. Again, they have not dropped a game yet here at the EMEA Regionals. Bluebin now back in control. They're going to put points on the map. That's a great play for me. Grab the Rockies, yep. got the double, and he, he could have saved this game for them. Yeah. I mean, that was a really big play indeed. He gets control. Of course, they're going to get those two kills. They're going to get these plots now. He's, I like this too. Look at Buck 57. Doesn't even take any damage from that exchange. There's no reason to. Right now, just laying down shots into the player who's dropping from base to bend. Uh, he's playing some really good positioning right now. Look at this. He's going to pick up this one. Probably a double kill again. Killing spree for him. So that's a really strong set uh, of plays and string of kills that he's putting together as they're now rounding the final moments of this match. They might also go for total control for a moment, but he will fall for a second. I believe that was going to be Silent and Punisher, who are working together over at Red Nest. Massive place for 57, but you know what? Supremacy is still in the game. If they can grab one more, if they don't, however, things are going to go bad. Punisher with the double kill. This could be the oh. change that they yeah. needed because they're only a few seconds away from winning Catwalk. Poor possibly coming under as we now see two plots back in the transfer. Rock is in the hands of 20, but you know what? They've got a fresh OS. He needs to reload them. I'd like someone to really challenge this OS guy urgently, otherwise they're in all kinds of trouble. One rocket, two rocket, there's the kill. That's what you got to do. Get a stop. That, that's a big, big trade. All four players are down for Epsilon for the moment, so perhaps some timing here for Supremacy to try to get total control, and they could bring this match back. This needs to be Epsilon's best push, push excuse me, of the series. Now, Unwise trying to get Blue Bend as well. I think they got a total control for a split second. What will Epsilon do here, taking a look at all four screens? Ten seconds down, three plots in hand. One of them will transfer back. Again, My gosh, Epsilon look at that. now got two. Just a second as we have a three-plot lead. All of a sudden, we're back in the hands of Epsilon. Personally, yep. Andy, unless... That's gonna be
Can they do it? That's going to be game, set, and match, my friends. 99. Will they move up to 100? Jimbo T back in the fly. You know what? Epsilon Esports are going to the World Finals, Andy. Look at that. They advance, of course, after a 3-0 to zero sweep. I have to say the French put up a fight there. Supremacy fighting back. But we got to talk about what happened in the final moments. It's an 86-95 to 95 game when one team has total control with two evenly matched squads. That's very difficult to push out. They got the outside spawn, which, if you play it right, can be a blessing. And uh, they're able to immediately push out. Within seconds, they control two of the points. So perhaps a little bit of uh, amazing teamwork and pushing from Epsilon. Maybe a little bit of Supremacy not watching certain spots or sight lines. But the gentleman here will shake hands. Hands, two of Europe's finest teams, Epsilon advancing, and of course, Supremacy, we will not see them at the World Finals. I think the, the, the biggest difference there, you've got to say, I mean, 57, we saw him doing some big plays right at the end. He's kind of the savior of that game. Fragzabilo also steps it up with a 23 and 16. Unfortunately, his teammates, 12, 12, and 15, going a little bit of a huge negative on that side. However, definitely 57, the standout player of the game. Mm -hmm. And 17 assists from Jimbo as well, 14, 15, a little bit of a neg one. But again, it's all about the objective. It's all about the win. More importantly, though, I think we have to say it was definitely on a stronghold game like that. We saw the back and forth switches, but mm -hmm. I think supremacy kind of lacked the discipline which was needed in order to win that game. Yeah, I think so too. I mean, what we saw from supremacy there uh, was some really good runs and I, I, I don't know, for, for me it wasn't Epsilon's strongest performance in that no, and I think not. Epsilon as they look to the world finals need to get ready for that game type and prepare perhaps differently. Um, all credit to Supremacy, though. They played yeah. that game type great. They had a great run during their listening. It was exciting to listen to that, kind of hear the intensity in their side as well. You mentioned that their coach uh, was so loud as well yeah, during we that listening. In here. Uh, whatever he was stressing in, in French sounded really good to me. Um, and I, I think they put up a great fight on that match. So Epsilon needs to go back to the drawing board on Strongholds Eden and make sure that they're playing that at a North American level when they get to Worlds. Supremacy, I think, can be proud of their performance oh, yeah. in, in games two and three. I don't think their game one was particularly strong. I think they put up a fight, uh, but they played well in games two and three. So they, as they look to the rest of their Halo 5 career, I think they can be proud of what they were able to do here at the World Finals. I mean, making it this far is no small feat, right? They, I think they made the French community proud with their performance here. And despite the fact that it was 3-0, I think that doesn't tell the entire story of the series. And of course, if I was kind of infused in Millennium and one of those teams will be matching Epsilon, whoever wins the next game, matching them further down the bracket. I've kind of seen a few little weaknesses there, and I think both yep. of those teams obviously got one of French's finest, one of the UK's finest without question. You have a look at them and thinking, hmm, okay, they won't beat them, but they can be beaten. Yeah, you I can think make God bleed kind of scenario, exactly. and take advantage of that moving forward. Yeah, I think, I mean, the French team knows it, I think, uh, and everyone here watching knows that Epsilon might have some holes in strategies, right? Uh, especially when you have, I think Supremacy had great power up control at the end of yeah. the match. I think it was met equally by Epsilon's power weapon control throughout that game, uh, especially with the rocks. You saw, I think it was the, uh, one of the bucks came in with the rockets to neutralize yeah. that last overshield. Jimbo also had rockets and several times so uh, of course it's a little bit difficult when you're off total control on Eden strongholds and spawning to try to get that overshield especially if you don't have red nest or red it's really tough um, but I think teams watching knowing that Epsilon might have a few gaps in their strategy and I think Epsilon knows it too well speaking about power ops we're going to speak very quickly with a man who knows about controlling them especially a sniper rifle Mitch has an interview it's over to you I do indeed, and you've segued that perfectly. The Sims, so I'm here with Snipe Drone, made solid match for you guys overall. Definitely were tested in the in the second uh, in, the, in the second and third map, of course. I want to start off by talking about your role, of course, in in that series, and also your role when you're playing on maps that don't have sniper rifles there as well. We're talking about Fathom, we're talking about Eden. Because um, obviously when we went to Coliseum, you were headlining, you were pulling off some fantastic shots. But tell me how, if there's a mindset change or a role change for you when there's no sniper available. Uh, I think my role is basically these three run around in a pack. I kind of run around on my own. Yep. Picking up the kills that they're making one shot. It's pretty much how, what I do. So you're still trying to control power weapons and play as a bit of a lone wolf, uh, even with no sniper on the map? Um, yeah, I mean, the bucks aren't very good with the rail, so <laughs> me, and Jim have to, me and Jim have to pick up that, so, yeah. Banter. All right, well, let's talk about the uh, Team Slayer map then as well. That was quite close. Obviously, it was Jimbo with the rockets in the end able to clutch it out, get you guys a two-kill uh, victory. And at no real point in that game were you sort of able to uh, get, get in the lead until right at the end. Tell us what was going through your heads. Was there a strategy change? Was there a change of tactic? You just kept trying to stick with the same strategy all the way through. 
Um, I think we realised like half through the game, halfway through the game, um, that we were giving away easy, easy kills. Yep. Uh, when we went one down, we literally all of us went down. So we kind of, kind of took a step back. At the end, it came to a bit of a standoff. Uh, Will dropped the snipe for me, picked up a couple of kills. Yep. Jim had the rocket, so we knew we knew we knew that we had to put the game in his hands. He needed to be the guy to get the kill. Um, yes. Yeah. Right, well, mate, obviously uh, you booked your ticket towards the semi-finals, and I'm sure you were probably as shocked as a few other people at seeing Dignitas make an earlier exit from the tournament. Who's your eye most set on now amongst the remaining teams? Who do you think is going to be your biggest challenge? Um, biggest challenge will probably be infused if they uh, win this game here, win this series. Um, they've always been our rivals. Um, yeah, definitely infused. All right, well, we look forward to seeing how that one goes down. Thanks for joining me on the Thank desk you. here. We did have a Ramirez come over and, and shake Snipe Drone's hand here as well. So, plenty of respect, at least, between uh, some of these players on those two teams. So, hopefully, we may even see an infused versus Epsilon matchup. But for now, it's back over to the desk to break this one down, guys. Thank you very much there, Mitch. All right, guys, that was a, a pretty good game. There was a few tense moments. I don't think 3-0 quite tells the story of how Supremacy at least gave them a good fight. Let's break into it, though, straight away. Let's look at map number one. Yeah, map number one, honestly, Epsilon definitely took this away extremely fast. They're, they had a lot of aggression controlling yep. the power-ups, controlling the power weapons. They were moving flags fast. They capped their first flag within the first minute. And then you actually saw a good standoff between Supremacy and Epsilon. Yep. Supremacy did a great job on getting the flag back to their base. I think we had, uh, what was it, Unwise get a nice double kill. He snuck into Epsilon's base, mm -hmm. got a double kill, ran the flag bottom middle, and got it all the way back to their base. There was a good three minutes where there was a flag standoff. Unfortunately, Epsilon just, they made it happen. They took down the flag and got the return and scored flag uh, cap number two. I think one of the things we were talking about during kind of while we were off air was, was just how Epsilon were playing that in terms of their mentality. Yes. They were so calm. Very we even calm said, uh, I, I think we were discussing, I said, I was guaranteed if we go to a listen in, they'll be super calm. And then, funny enough, we actually <laughs> did a few seconds later. Um, for that kind of mentality for a player, is that what really sets them apart? Is that showing just why this team is so good? I mean, good? I think it, uh, it does and it doesn't, right? Is each team kind of has their, their set ways. And when you are playing um, in an environment like this, you're normally going to get intense. Uh, right mm -hmm. now, these guys are just lax. But I know that in the past, we've seen teams such as Instinct, right, where they are extremely vocal and they aren't that intense online. Yeah. But then you get them to a finals, and I mean, Lunchbox loses his voice, you know, by, by the first day. So uh, I, I think that when it comes down to it, we, we do see that they're common and collected today, but maybe by the end of the day, they are going to be screaming their faces off. Well, funny enough, um, we were talking about, you know, that obviously that they haven't really been pushed yet. We, we didn't think that Epsilon had been pushed. They hadn't really had to get the top gear. That wasn't the case as we go further into this game series. But before we go to map two, map number one, is there anything that really stood out for you two? Yeah, I, I would say that um, it was a little bit concerning seeing Buck 20, Jimbo falling off the map a few times. I know that they're very keen to try and make in those top middle jumps. Yeah. But, I mean, it's, I feel like we're at a point in time now in the game where you should have the thrust, ground pound, stabilize ability to at least just not fall off the map. I mean, it, it, yeah, it's been out long enough. think that kind of takes into them being a little bit sick and oh. just still kind of warming up today. I mean, I mean, a little bit of that, but then you look at what happened with Jimbo, right? He grabbed the first rail gun, and he secured that cap. From, um, we saw, who was it, Snipe Drone go top middle with the flag run. Great play, yeah. but then he gets cocky, right? He pushes in. He grabs the next rail gun, drops down for camo, gets cocky. So it just seems like every time these guys get a little bit of a lead, they, they lose some self-discipline. So yeah. I think that's where probably their biggest flaw. And we did see spurts of teamwork, though, from Supremacy. They, they were mostly yep. kind of going around individually, yep. getting into individual battles, fighting 2v1 ones and that's that's not what you want to be doing at this caliber uh, of level of teams right now yep. but we did see the teamwork so they did have it and it like you said this series was actually a lot closer than than the final score yeah it most certainly was so let's move on to map number two because that really was close yeah. um, and it looked like game. supremacy almost had it in the bag but it did go wrong for them they weren't able to epsilon came up clutch and kind of managed to steal it back there now side i know you were making a lot of notes and talking a lot about that game so let's start with you 
Yeah, I mean, we really saw them come together with their teamwork. They were they were moving around the map as a unit, controlling Sniper, and they actually had the exact same setup that Epsilon was using with Snipe Drone sitting yep. back by the elbow, getting in his favorite spot, getting all those angles. They yep. had that same setup, and they were using that against Epsilon. And we saw the game was pretty much close all the way through the match. It was looking really good for them, but towards the end, they missed the Rockets, they missed the Sniper, and pretty much gave the game to Epsilon. Uh, and then from the Epsilon's yeah. point of view, we did not see that much teamwork from them. You heard it from yeah. Snipe Drone saying we were getting into individual battles. We were playing very we uncharacteristic it. of ourselves. Yep. And there was many times we saw Bucks just jumping in and kind of going into the 2v1s that yeah. we just saw. Well, maybe maybe a little bit of overconfidence because, I mean, early in the match, we kind of saw Snipe Drone get flanked not once but twice in quick succession. He dealt with the first one. Um, in amazing fashion if you remember uh but the second time i was, I was sitting there going where are the but you know he usually has the, the, the buck shield yeah um and they weren't anywhere to be found and that's when actually supremacy managed to wrest control back away because they yep. lost sniper they lost control and and from then they were kind of fighting a losing battle talking about the sniper though unwise hitting some incredible sniper shots oh, yeah. just Coming Great in shots. clutch for his team, and yeah. it was good to see the the sniper out of the hands of Snipe Drone. And into well, they, the, really, they really had to, with the way he was playing that match. They yeah. really had to take away from him because I don't think he missed. Without a doubt, and, I don't and, think he missed. And on top of that, the one thing that I thought was pretty curious was. I feel like the game, it was a supremacy game, right? Yeah. And then we saw towards the end, it was the rocket launcher and the sniper that fell in the hands of Snipe Drone yeah. and then Jimbo, right? And when we watched Epsilon play, when that happens to them, when the other team gets full control at the end, you see Jimbo instantly make a flank attempt, right? He yeah. goes bottom middle, he goes for the crouch walk, he knows that he needs to make a play. And, and unfortunately for supremacy, they all turtled up. They stood in blue cave, they stood on blue flag, they didn't try and make a play. Yeah. They just let rockets and sniper come yeah. to them. Well, we said Not that was was, at that point, there was no way for them to win. They were either going to run into the Rockets of Jimbo, or if they tried to peek out, yeah. then you, know, you had Snipe dragged yeah, out by they, Red Corner. Yeah, it was something. never going to let them get it's out of there at all. Um, all right, well, we've come to the end of that game quite naturally. Let's move on to map number three, then. Um, Supremacy, again, a really good performance yeah. from them, but Back it just forth. wasn't enough. Their communication. I mean, when we heard that team listening, I know that Bravo said he couldn't understand anything. Thankfully, <laughs> I took French for a few years in school, and uh, it was actually immaculate. I mean, they were just going on all cylinders, calling out, you know, locations, spawn locations. I was actually blown away uh, from hearing just, you know, how, how energized and, and their synergy across the board. Uh, it, it was really impressive. Um, the, the thing that was crazy to me, though, was just the back and forth. I mean, we saw Supremacy get to, you know, we see Epsilon grab two, and it's going back and forth. Rockets are going to this guy, Rockets are going to that guy. But to me, the turning point came when the overshield came up, right? The overshield went yeah. to Punisher. Well, that's. I think. I think this is a very good point here because it got quite heated. It uh, did. On the well, no, not in there. Out here in the analyst oh, panel. I, uh, yeah, I was. I, I believe the call was go get the rocket rockets, you moron. Um, I don't know if you yeah. want to kind of. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I emphasize what, what you so were getting at. With what that, happened but. was Punisher. He timed the overshield perfectly, yeah. and rockets were coming up. And instead of him, you know, retreating and going out for the rockets, he just went for what was in front of him. There was a guy at Tower, a guy yeah. at Nest, and he just bullheaded Nest, goes out there, loses Rockets. Now, I thought that was the true turning point, right? But then I was wrong, because later we see Unwise, in my opinion, actually kind of lost in the game. He grabbed that overshield, right? And his teammate was with him, Red Nest. He saw the guy on his team pushing out towards the Rockets. A Rocket guy comes, fires two. I think it was Buck 57. Yeah. Fires two of his Rockets. Unwise has full OV. Just saw his teammate die to two full Rockets. Yeah. The Rockets are coming now on a reload. And instead of him jumping out, he just stays there, waits for the full reload of rockets, and then gets double rocketed himself. I mean, Unwise needed to capitalize on, on, on that reload, and unfortunately, he just stayed too patient. Yeah, I think uh, Supremacy just wasn't able to get enough power-ups or power weapons, though. I think they only got one rocket. And, yep. and that incident with that the overshield him. that you were talking about, I think that could have possibly been the only overshield they got as well. So I think for how well they did and how well they kept that match, like, within reach for not really getting any of the power-ups or power weapons. Yep. I mean, they did a great job. And they were really playing, uh, their strategy was to hold Blue Bend, hold Nest, and keep the Epsilon spawning over at Catwalk and in tower. Uh, so it was a cool strategy seeing that from them. Although they couldn't hold it down to the very end, it's yep. just getting those last power-ups and power weapons, just like we saw in Coliseum Slayer. That's what beat them. They need to be on top of that throughout the game. And and most importantly, at the very end of the game, when it means the most.
Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for kind of breaking that one down for everyone at home. Now, we are actually going to go into the next game. And the next game is very important. Infuse versus Millennium. This will be the last chance to qualify for the World Championship for any of these teams. So don't go anywhere. Join us after the break. exclusive.